Bulginaka, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing these crimes, report them immediately. I'm Polly. And I'm Peter. We host the Traffic Jam Show on City FM. From 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every weekday. Do, do the, the right, right thing. In this bulletin, enrollment numbers draw. PTSD cases surface in the north. Over 16,000 Fijians assisted. From the studios of FBC Suva. There has been a huge drop in the numbers of students enrolled for the new school year in TC Yasa affected areas. Education Minister Rosie Agbar says a team is still on the ground assessing the damage. Agbar confirms classes will begin on the 18th of this month for teachers and a day later for students. Pranita Prakash reports. The Category 5 cyclone, which hit the Northern Division more than three weeks ago, has affected student numbers. As you know, the schools, when they get damaged, they are rated in respect of the type of and amount of damage uh, that has actually occurred to the buildings in those schools. R1 and R2, as we can see in, uh, through Cyclone Yasa, a lot of schools fall within the particular category. In other words, some of them have damages, you know, if you look at uh, construction costs uh, in terms of the materials, $10,000, $15,000, $20,000, with a few tin roofs may have. Uh, uh, you know, blown away or perhaps some damages to the window where there's been some water leakage, etc. So these schools can be up and running fairly quickly. And the what we have found uh, during our monitoring at ground levels, that though many schools have sustained extensive damage, you will see that classrooms have fallen down. The number of students enrolled currently um, last year and those anticipated to, uh, to join, uh, resume classes from the 18th, the numbers have drastically fallen down. Akbar says while a number of schools have sustained damage, they hope to carry out quick fix on some schools before school starts. She says they want children to continue with their education. We will not pressure parents and students on uh, uniforms and footwear and stationery. All we want them is to re uh, return to schools and of course there's a lot of assistance provided. So um, to the parents, please don't pressure yourself. This is the time to rebuild your homes, rebuild your lives but we want the education of our children to continue. The minister also received $300,000 from Vodafone Fiji to help repair about 20 schools. Vodafone Fiji says they are working with the education ministry to channel assistance where needed. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Many women and children living in the communities worst hit by TC Yasa affected were traumatized by the events of the Category 5 tropical cyclone last month. Divisional Women Interest Officer Northern Moira Afo says they have several reported cases of trauma from the badly affected communities, mostly in Bua. Eleanor Turangaviu has more. The reported cases of trauma are being handled by Medical Services Pacific and Empower Pacific. The two agencies have also identified some post-traumatic stress disorder cases in communities already assessed and are revisiting them. Mostly we have spoken to women eh? and uh, now that we have the child uh, services uh, uh, come in, we have also identified some children who are traumatized and need some counseling. Along with the various UN organizations and partner agencies, the ministry has visited and provided psychosocial support to all badly affected communities in Madhwata, Lakonrave, and are almost done with Mua. For the most hit places, uh, the story is the same, eh? how they have been traumatized by what has happened. Even some children have said, shared their story, how they were so afraid when they see um, roofing iron flying around and coconut trees falling on their neighborhood, uh, neighbors' houses and all that. And so that creates a lot of uh, trauma. As a way forward, the ministry and the UNFPA will be establishing women and children friendly spaces to provide continued psychosocial support and counseling. When people are traumatized or have uh, problems, they don't speak about it until they are provided with that environment of which they can uh, speak freely and, uh, and uh, report or uh, share whatever they are going through. These most affected areas will be revisited again to ensure that the affected members of the community 
are coping well. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. The Republic of Fiji Military Forces Engineers has started repairing schools affected by TC Yasa. 32 schools have been identified by the Ministry of Education as badly affected and in need of repair before school starts in two weeks. Wasting no time, Republic of Fiji Military Forces Engineers get right into school repairs after all schools used as evacuation centers were cleared late Sunday evening. On uh, these uh, schools. Uh, uh, cleaning up uh, with uh, the community and also the, uh, the management of the school. The unavailability of bitumen could further delay the fixing of potholes that have become an eyesore to many road commuters. The Fiji Roads Authority says the only option to properly fix this issue is to reap and rehabilitate parts of the damaged road. However, they will continue to focus on repairing potholes in the interim. FRA had spent $3.5 million to repair potholes on 36 kilometers of road around Suva before Christmas break. Acting Chief Executive Kamal Prasad says pothole repair will commence once raw materials becomes available. What happened is we had run out of uh, bitumen uh, and the supplier didn't have any more bitumen so we had to stop until uh, uh, this Christmas break now and we still don't have bitumen at the moment and it arrives on 12th of this month uh, when we can restart our uh, rehabilitation works, uh, re reconstruction works um, for this portal. Prasad adds that the lack of qualified contractors is also hindering repair work. The Fiji Red Cross Society has assisted over 16,000 Fijians in TC Yasa affected areas. They will soon begin with a second phase of assistance with primary focus on those who missed out during the first round of relief pack distribution. Fiji Red Cross currently have over 18 volunteers on the ground assisting those in need of help. We're going to do First one, we're going to do another sweep uh, starting from the, for the next two weeks just to go all through the areas and just to find out where we've missed, you know, and uh, families that we may have missed. And uh, we're thankful for uh, things like Facebook because people are contacting us through Facebook. With many businesses in Nandi badly affected by the pandemic, this has not stopped them from reaching out to help other Fijians affected by tropical cyclone Yasa. Tanamaka based business Farm Boy has teamed up with Hare Krishna Movement and the Sikh Sangat in an effort to help families who still need assistance. Details with Filipina Castle. The assistance that will be provided by this group is aimed at families in Vanolevu that may still need help. Basically, covering Matwata and um, Bua area, uh, badly affected by cyclone, we will be giving uh, cooked food. Um, and uh, the Khalsa group is funding the uh, raw vegetables and hardware. Donations have been in cash and kind from members in Nandi and Lotoka and they're aiming to get it to the north as soon as possible. The Food for Life program, we will be doing free hot lunch uh, and hot dinner every day and estimating about 6,000 plates per day. Even we are taking cash, uh, so asking to people what they need, no? if they need like anything, what they need, same time we can buy and give to him. The Sikh Sagat through the Khalsa aid will be heavily involved also on the ground as they look to assist any family that is still in need. The first batch of assistance was also sent yesterday morning. Philip Anai Castle, FBC News. Hari Punja and Sons will be setting a new brewery in the country, a joint venture with Taula Beverages Company Limited of Samoa. Hari Punja and Sons Chair Hari Punja says the brewery will employ a highly qualified team with European training as well as the latest German technology to produce top quality products in accordance with the industry's manufacturing standards. Punja says they will service the Fijian market and simultaneously support other Pacific island countries. The new facility will be established on a six-acre property in Suva, housing the brewery, state-of-the-art logistical facilities and an office building. Punja adds that the company intends to brew a variety of beers suitable to meet customer preferences. Up ahead, young flying Fijians lock inspired by Colini Sao. And the first 2021 competition starts today. We're in the morning, and 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 we're in the
Sakia na ngau na mita ro bina na na bang sanga ika bala lo mata kina ngani. Dala bina oya wo meliki. Bulre oya wo Samuel Samuli. Nama kiki rau ena be mataka. Oni ti kina bang rombuka. Ni wo iti ni kali mana mini ti me ono kina ti na kaloko. Ena radio Fiji one na ndo mo ibiti. Kina kina na mataka. Young flying Fijians lock Temu Mayanava Nua's career has grown in leaps and bounds over the last few years. The former national age grade captain was part of the Flying Fijians Autumn Nations Cup match against Georgia, following which he was called up by the French top 14 side Lyon. Speaking exclusively to FBC Sports from France, the 23-year-old reveals what's gotten him this far and the inspiration behind his success. Aquila Dhamma with the story. Um, Losing his mom, who single-handedly raised him, was quite tough, but rugby was something Maya Nabonua resorted to, and he was inspired by a family member who was part of uh, this historical achievement in Rio four years ago. The biggest inspiration was um, all my uncles, you know. They inspired me and um, growing up they helped me a lot. And um, one of them who actually made the national scene was Oseko um, Linisa um, when someone that had really inspired um, inspired me to you know to keep on driving keep on moving forward you know his parents broke up when he was in year four but to see that someone from his own household made it to the national side gave the former fiji under 20 captain some hope one thing good about rugby is that you determine your own destiny so in a few years time it's myself who's going to determine that and um, i would want to play for Fiji in the next World Cup and I want to keep on representing Fiji until I retire. So um, that's, that's the plan in my head and what's left now is for me to do that hard work. The FRU is excited that young players like Maya Nobonua are starting to make their mark on the world stage. It's an exciting year for the French Fijians. Yeah, as you will know, we have a very young team. Uh, and as we build 2023, we are excited about the uh, the opportunities that uh, will come our way. Maya Nabunua featured for Northland last year in New Zealand's ITM Cup. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Pre-season training for the Kaiviti Silk Tales has begun ahead of the Ron Massey Cup competition in Australia. The side has unfinished business in the tournament after the debut last year was short-lived due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Filipina Icaso caught up with the Silk Tales in Lautoka. It's the team's first training session for this year's Ron Messi Cup as they aim to continue where they left off from last year, winning their debut game 40-16 over the Wolves. Yeah, well, it's, it's going to be real similar to what we did during the year with ADP. I think that's been the beauty of it. Um, these boys come into pre-season, like the drills that we do and what's expected of them won't be new to them because um, we've laid the foundations during the season. The next eight weeks for the Silk Tales will be crucial, especially with the side leaving for Australia later this month in preparation for the competition. We are all selected here for a purpose and that is to represent the Kaviti Silk Tales team. And if it is for us to be overseas to play the competition, uh, we will do it. Well, the coach has given his thumbs ups for the first session of 2021, they will need to up the ante in the next few weeks. We're doing a quarantine at Runaway Bay on the Gold Coast. Uh, it's, it's a sporting complex over there, so that's, that's been a, probably a blessing for us where, where, um, where if you're normally going over and quarantine in Australia, you'd be stuck in a hotel room for two weeks. So uh, pretty, it's good for us that we won't lose any, any time on the training paddock. The KVT Silk Tales will leave the country on the 25th of this month. Philippe and I, Caso, FBC Sports. Basketball Fiji has set its focus on grassroots development for this year. As there are still uncertainties on when international competitions will begin, the Federation has started the year with a basketball tournament for secondary school students. The Camp Pacific Secondary Students Basketball Championship, which starts today, will feature 27 teams. Basketball Fiji Chief Operating Officer Lai Pomau says the competition is part of the development pathway. We hope to expand on our Bull Hoops program, uh, but for now we are uh, quite focused on uh, providing an opportunity for uh, secondary, secondary school uh, 
uh, students uh, who are on school holidays. Occasional rain, heavy at times, and a few thunderstorms can be expected today. Localized heavy faults may lead to flash flooding of low lying areas. And that is your FBC morning news. Do join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. Have a great day. खूबसूरत देश बीजी में चाइल्ड अब्यूज की घटनाएं आए दिन बढ़ रही हैं। क्यों बच्चों का मासूम बचपन अब्यूज का शिकार हो जाता है अपने बच्चों की सुरक्षा का खास ख्याल रखें। उनसे बातचीत करें उनके दोस्तों के बारे में जानें। आज के बच्चे देश का भविष्य है मैं दीप्ति और मैं मोनिश आपके हम सफर शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फाइव फोर्टी फाइव तक रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन आरोप